lady was an instrumental figure in the Tudor court, chiefly known as the devoted governess and close confidant of Queen Elizabeth I. Born around 1502 and appointed as Elizabeth's chief gentlewoman of the Privy Chamber, playing a pivotal role in the young princess's upbringing. Their bond was so profound that Elizabeth often turned to her for advice even during her reign as Queen. Facing trials including imprisonment during the reign of Queen Mary I due to her Protestant beliefs and associations with Elizabeth, her unwavering loyalty and influence on the Virgin Queen remains a testament to her significant yet often overshadowed role in English history. So join me now as we look back on the life of Cat Ashley. In the shadows of history, the parentage of Cat remains veiled in uncertainty, a puzzle with two enigmatic contenders for her father's role. One contender strides forward as Sir Philip Champernow, his name whispered in echoes of a 1536 letter from Cat to Thomas Cromwell, at the time the Earl of Essex. In those ink-stained words, a glimpse is caught of a father, much to do with the little living he has, a tantalising thread indeed. Sir Philip's wife Catherine Carew stands at the intersection of speculation, a mere 16 years of age when her daughter drew her first breath, yet the labyrinth corridors of time bear no mention of family ties between Our Lady and Joan Denny, the daughter of Sir Philip Champernown, sisters not by ink or blood, and a mystery that lingers in their connection. The second contender strides in, Sir John Champernown, his name intertwined with the years of her inception. A whispered query lingers, was his wife's age of approximately 43 a harbinger of doubt? The naysayers weave their doubts, yet Catherine Knowles, her last childbirth at 38, challenges the arithmetic of age. But Sir John, like a flickering candle, was snuffed out within a year of this youngster's arrival, leaving behind lingering shadows of a potential connection. A letter to Cromwell, the ink fresh in 1536, alludes to her father in the present tense, a curious dance with time. The identity of this father rests as a fragment of ambiguity, unless a phantom stepfather has a role to play. Yet whispers of Cat's potential lineage draw a tangled view of kinship, intertwining her with the likes of Joan Champernown and her union with Sir Anthony Denny, the trusted confidant of King Henry VIII. But then a tantalising prospect emerges, a different branch of the Champanel family, a puzzle piece from a distant corner of history. Amidst the whispers and speculations, Catherine's origin story remains an enigma that history seems eager and reticent to reveal. In the wake of Prince Edward's first cries, a shift unfolded in young Elizabeth's world. Lady Margaret Bryan, her stalwart governess, drifted away, summoned to serve her half-brother's burgeoning court, an undeniable change and a vacancy that echoed in Elizabeth's life. The mantle of care shifted and into her world stepped Lady Troy, a guardian with watchful eyes and a presence that swathed Elizabeth until the whispers of late 1545, which signalled her retirement. Yet as one chapter ends, another emerges in the tapestry of Elizabeth's life. A new name, Catherine Champernow, etches itself into the annals of her history. In the dance of time of July 1536 bestows her the title of gentlewoman in waiting to the then Lady Elizabeth, and in the corridors of royal intrigue, a connection was forged, a bond of guidance and nurture. With the dawning of 1537, the wheels of fate turned once more, and Catherine took on a weightier mantle, that of Elizabeth's third governess. Elizabeth's world unfolded under Catherine's guiding hand at a mere four years old. With politeness, respect, artistry and grace, the young princess learned to navigate the intricacies of courtly conduct. Beyond the mundane, a symphony of skills echoed, needlework woven with care, embroidery blossoming like wildflowers, and dances and rides that breathed life into her formative years. For six years she painted a portrait of a young prodigy, her fingers stitching a cambric shirt for her sibling, a testament to her burgeoning talents. And amidst these skills, the quieter corridors of academia whispered their secrets. Mathematics unravelled, geography unfurled its maps, 
and astronomy spark visions of distant stars and tales of history unfold. The melody of languages, French, Italian, Flemish and Spanish, all created a multilingual communication. In the heart of it all stood Catherine, an architect of Elizabeth's intellectual universe. A woman of education, her knowledge was a treasure trove Elizabeth eagerly tapped into. Years later, the princess would extol Kat's dedication, remembering her tutor's great labour and pain in bringing her up in learning and honesty. In the presence of Catherine Champanel, Elizabeth's earliest years were an odyssey of wisdom and nurturing, each moment sewn into the fabric of her becoming, laying the foundation for the formidable queen she would one day become. In 1543, a pivotal year in young Elizabeth's life, a new figure emerged on the stage of her destiny. It was a year marked by the marriage of King Henry VIII to Catherine Parr, a union that would shape Elizabeth's path in unexpected ways. Catherine, a woman of grace and wisdom, brought the promise of stability, rekindling Elizabeth's right to succession and inviting her into a world of royalty. By 1545, fate led Catherine Champanel to her conjugal journey. A union with John Ashley, a gentleman attendant and kin to Anne Boleyn, tethered her to her tale of matrimony. A chapter unfolding beyond the bloom of youth, Catherine stepped into marriage's embrace, a journey carved by time, experience and connection. Yet as fate wove its intricate threads, the towering figure of King Henry VIII breathed his last in 1547, casting a realm in transition. Edward VI ascended the throne, a young king with uncles vying for control. Among these figures, Thomas Seymour emerged, his ambitions not confined to the realm of power alone. He cast his gaze upon the young Elizabeth, the princess of potential, and inquired about the possibility of matrimony, a question met with rejection, leaving a trail of unfulfilled aspirations. Yet Thomas Seymour was a man not easily deterred, shifted his focus from royalty to the Dowager Queen herself, Catherine Parr. Their history rekindled and in the wake of Henry's passing, they embarked on a journey of matrimony. The new courtly union bore implications for Elizabeth, but it marked a new juncture in her life's voyage. Amidst these intricate dynamics, Catherine, ever a guardian and guide, found herself witness to a delicate dance between Elizabeth and Thomas Seymour. What began as an amusing flirtation took a disquieting turn when he crossed the threshold of Elizabeth's chamber, his intent questioned and his actions unsettling. Catherine's concern gave voice to the whispers of unease as her role evolved from gentlewoman to protector. The echoes of this disturbing episode followed Elizabeth to Hatfield House, where the winds of gossip churned, yet the landscape shifted once more with Catherine Parr's passing. Elizabeth's world undergoing tectonic change. Through these tumultuous waves, Kat remained steadfast and her loyalty unwavering. But the plot thickened. Thomas Seymour's political moves unraveled, revealing a man of complexity and intrigue. Kat's involvement in these matters triggered her arrest and in the tower's shadows, her story was laid bare, exonerating her from treasonous intent. Amid it all, Elizabeth's name remained untarnished and a testament to Kat's unwavering dedication. Eventually, Catherine emerged from the tower's grip, her loyalty unbroken. A returning presence, she stood beside Elizabeth, a guardian, as events cascaded. Through the storm of Mary I's reign, Catherine's support endured, yet shadows still loomed. In the clutches of 1556, Catherine found herself imprisoned once more, seditious books about her alleged crime. The wheel of fate spun again as the confines of the fleet prison became her realm. But in the end, Catherine's tale intersects with Elizabeth's in layers of loyalty and trials of fidelity. Bound by their shared journey, theirs was a connection forged in the crucible of history, shaped by tumultuous times and steadfast devotion.
As the wheels of time turned and the realm transitioned from the reign of Mary I to the era of Elizabeth, Kat's role evolved once more. With the ascent of Elizabeth to the throne, a new chapter beckoned for Catherine and her husband. The intricate dance of courtly appointments began anew, casting Catherine as the first lady of the bedchamber and her husband as the master of the jewel house. A pair united by duty, their positions wove them into the very fabric of the Queen's realm. Within the hallowed walls of the palace, Catherine's influence grew, a hidden wellspring of information for the enigmatic Queen. Her proximity to power gave her a unique capacity to broker favours and forge alliances for the noble elite. In this realm of whispers and courtesies, Catherine's hands guided the shape of a rigid aristocracy, a tapestry woven with threads of loyalty that surrounded the Queen's reign in a web of control. In the spring of 1561, the Queen's affections manifested as a gift. An old French velvet gown that had weathered the years, a relic of a bygone era, its rich fabric carried history, bearing the weight of a sovereign's generosity. Yet gifts can be both tokens of affection and symbols of power. As time's sands continued to shift and Catherine's life neared its twilight, the summer of 1565, a season bathed in the sun's warmth, witnessed her peaceful departure from this world. The exact age that marked her exit remained shrouded, but her passing marked the end of an era. The loss of Catherine cast a shadow over the Queen, a friend's absence from the court, a poignant reminder of life's fleeting nature. As Catherine's final moments drew near, the Queen's presence was a constant presence, a testament to the depth of their bond. In the realm of monarchs and courtiers, their connection defied the nature of power and politics. Elizabeth's sincere and unadorned mourning reflected the loss of a true friend, a confidant who had woven herself into the heartstrings of the Queen's reign. And as Catherine's journey ended, her influence and loyalty legacy lingered, forever entwined with the intimacy of Queen Elizabeth's reign. <laughs>